All right, so I had a, a viewer asking me a question uh, regarding a video that I just did where I made an assumption uh, and asked people to believe something, and this person asked me for a little proof, and he asked me to prove that the limit of sine of x over x is actually equal to 1 as x approaches 0. Uh, and, the, and the proof of this can be done in three ways, and I want to remind uh, those of you, especially if you're in AP Calculus, that proofs usually take these three forms, and those uh, these three forms are the numer or numeric proof, graphical proof, and analytic proof. And I'd like to go over just the first two types of proof right now, uh, Hassam. I'm going to provide you with analytic proof later, so I hope you'll take these two uh, as, a, as a goodwill gesture towards you so I can respond quickly. So this is what I did. Uh, uh, first thing I want to remind you is that we have these x values here. I'm going to switch the, I'm going to trade these out for theta values because we're talking about trig here and we're talking about angles. So I kind of wanted to start there, but this is, this is how I answered this question. So first, if you don't mind, I went through the numerical solution. So this is what I did. I went to my, I'm using a, uh, you can see it up here, I'm using a CAS calculator. This CAS calculator happens to be a CX, and if you don't have a CX but you have a CAS, just, sorry Texas, don't, you don't need to go out and buy a CX, just upgrade your software to 3.0 software and you'll get all the bells and whistles except for color. So if you're, a, color is the thing that you want. And also the CX is real thin and light and it has a lot of uh, rechargeable batteries, etc. But if you already have a CAS, man, don't go out and, and buy a new one. It's crazy talk. So anyway, this is what I did. I took my CAS and I, this is actually backwards of the way I did it. What I did was I typed in sine of theta over theta. I went here, right? I went here and I hit control store and I stored it as f of theta. I hit enter, it said done. And then I started to screw around with this and what we're saying is we want the limit as as theta approaches zero so that's what i did i just made uh, just started my approach here so i started at 0.5 and f of 0.5 is 0.96 ish then i just got a little bit closer by going to f of 0.25 and i get this value and i don't need to read all these values to you but this is how i'm providing this and if i was taking a test and i was asked to provide proof numerically i would create a table and then i'd fill in my table right from here um, here's one little glitch that I wanted to share with you is that these calculators ha have float values and the float value tells it where to round from and I don't have this one floated out very far because when I put in this value it said it was one it's not one it's a number exceedingly close to one but it's not exactly one so that's not actually true and I kept moving out a little bit and so so there's my numerical proof and actually what I should do now is I should go to do all these same values again but take the negative of them so I approach from the left and the right so what I should do now is uh, f of negative 0.5, f of negative 0.25, f of negative 1.25, etc. And you'll see that you'll converge on that value of, of 1. So, okay. So the next thing, so that's my numerical proof to you, Hassam. I hope I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, please forgive me. And I hope you appreciate I'm trying to, to call you by your name correctly. Here we go. So here's my graphic proof, if you don't mind. Um, just, you know what, take a second here. The reason that all of this is true is because as these numbers get really close to zero, I don't know if you can picture the unit circle in your head or not, but if you can picture the unit circle, sine of zero is zero, but everything other than that in 180, its sine is a non-zero number. So what you're ending up with here is a small number over a small number which is approaches one, doesn't it? Right, and here, a smaller number over a smaller number, etc. So, you know, let me take a second. No, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I'm just gonna stick to my proof here. Now, if you have questions about the unit circle thing, let me know and I'll, and I'll address it, I promise. So, so then what I did is I went back and I plugged in my, my function. In this case, I just put in the sine function. And I, what I want you to notice is that sine of zero right this thing is set up um, in intervals of pi so here's pi and here's 2 pi right here etc but you see when when theta is 0 the function has a height of 0 and 0 over 0 is not defined but if you just move just like even just a tiny bit over to one side or the other you're gonna get some tiny positive number over some tiny positive number which is near 0 or you're going to get some tiny negative number here over some other tiny negative number, and a negative over a negative is still 
a positive and so the value of sine of theta over theta is going to equal about one i hope this is good proof and i hope it's not too circular i i, I think it fits the bill and i promise to provide you with my analytic proof in the next couple of days okay looking forward to your comments thanks very much keep up the good work